Hello and welcome, RC Shim in the hangar. Today I was wondering if I can show you nicely the difference between analog video transmission and digital video transmission. This one here is DJI HDL or Air Unit or Cadex Vista or whatever you know it under. And there's a lot of difference. Quite a while ago I compared analog to digital video on an RC car here, driving here around and you saw how much better digital worked against all the interferences. There's a good reason why this works this way. Analog is quite primitive when you look at it from an RF perspective and digital has a terrible lot of stuff going on in the transmission algorithms. So today we will again use the Spectrum with its massive antenna. Scan for the difference of analog video here with the old Immersion RC Vortex 150, it was the small one against the Recon 7 which has a Vista and I analyze it here on the spectrum view and you will see how firstly how analog looks and I could zoom in quite quite nicely and show you the analog waves it's easier encoded and that's why you see it quite good on the 3D waterfall and this is the normal spectrum view And what you see here, these red spikes are the sync pulses. They are roughly 16.666 milliseconds apart. Let's say this is a frame. We get to 60 Hz quite accurately. If we look to it from the side, it looks like the spectrum view. But if we look closely enough, we should see 500 separations between the sync pulses. So it's relatively simply how analog video is encoded over just frequency modulation over time. Now let's move on to see the same with DJI Digital. Powered up the quad. What do we see? This is channel 8 going to quite a lot of power. Then reducing the power and then a few seconds later jumping to the desired channel. First thing we saw, this is the 25 Mbit mode channel 8. This is some random carrier that always seems to be there around 5772 megahertz. 50 megabit mode which relates to 36 megahertz channel 1. So you can read up the channel frequencies, I've measured them all, and you see this very much differs from what we see in the analog world, where it's a funky line. This looks like a solid block of data. You see some strange arches here. I'm supposing that this is the effect of the QAM modulation. Do we see something synchronizable here? Here it looks like, did we find 80 milliseconds, but get to the 80 milliseconds. Firstly, we can see how accurate DJI moves on the frequency domain. So it's not like a bell curve, it's really straightforward blocks of data. So those blocks are not always the same length. And this has something to do with a rather complicated quadrature amplitude modulation. And this is all is collected under the, the name of uh, OFDM transmission. It's the same transmission that also your LTE modems, your mobile phones use. So that's the best view I can give you in the 3D world from the DJI video signal. And this is very much different from your normal control link because in the control link you only need a few bits that represent your joystick. Here you really have to cram a lot of data into the RF. This is a good video by Aronia and it demonstrates QAM modulation uh, as we could see it in 3D. And those are, in this case, it's 16 spikes where they transmit data. That's how you have to imagine the data transmission that DJI really does. This is QAM 265, 
by this you see how many parallel data channels you have. And the more data channels you have, the less separation you have and the more prone you are to interferences and data loss. Once you fly further away, they will just remove the amount of space between those spikes and eventually fall back to QAM16, where the space between those spikes is smaller and you, know, you can still see data but not as much bitrate. And then I want uh, to encourage you to check out QRP's video, Digital FPV Modulation, where it explains frequency modulation, amplitude modulation, it even explains better how NTSC works. And there is where it gets really complicated. You have two waves uh, phase shifted, transmitted at the same time. This is the spikes again that we saw in 3D earlier, QAM spikes that transmit our bitrate in DJI Digital. So I don't think I should go further into this. If you are really curious about how these work, check out uh, QRP's two videos about DJI Digital. I think they are the best that I've seen so far, explaining how it could work. This is also a good explanation why DJI works so well. You have a lot of parallel transmission going on. And if one of those spikes is interfered with RF loss, the other spikes still work. If you have a lot of spikes, they are very close to each other. And if you have RF interference, it gets fuzzy and it cannot transmit data anymore. In that case, you have to reduce the number of spikes so they get farther apart. And then you can only transmit less amount of data, but reliable still. So that's what I suppose what happens if you fly DJI far away and it reduces the bitrate in your display. It just have, has to reduce the number of parallel transmissions of data to still give you image. Down to a degree where you can only have like 4 or 5 Mbits and still see a bit. It's not like in analog world where parts of the image are missing. The whole image, but it's just blurrier because you have less bitrate. So it's very complicated, very complex matter. And they didn't invent the wheel uh, new, so to speak. They just took what was already there, but really uh, fabricated in a, in a really nice working way. So I'm a, still a big fan of the DJI video transmission, as you can tell. On my wall, there are mostly DJI copters nowadays. I really can't stand the analog image anymore because I'm very much a, a visual type and I need to see all the branches, I need to uh, anticipate the nice scenery already while flying and that's why yeah, I don't need the fastest latency because I'm not a racer so DJI Digital and there was this uh, video that I saw from Bartwell where he compared HD Zero with the same camera as DJI and you saw how much DJI was better in terms of quality so I currently I have no plans of taking a closer look at HD Zero. Sorry, but uh, I don't see the application for me. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you're not more confused uh, than you were before watching this video. I tried to get it out as easy as I can. I think I understand how DJI works now, and I appreciate it even more now. Uh, it's just going on a lot, and yeah. I'm really looking forward to use it the next time on the field, knowing how it works now. If you know some additional facts that could help me understand it even better or get it in view even better, let's try to do this. Until this, thanks a lot for watching, see you next time, bye for now.